Welcome back. If you're watching this on YouTube or if you're here on Twitch, thanks for still being here. Um, today I'm going to teach you guys how to make an R package. Um, so making an R package um, is useful because R packages are the thing that you sell as a bioinformatician more or less, right? It's the, it's the software that you write, you bundle it up and you then give it to other people so that they can use your new fancy method that you developed. So our packages provide encapsulation, example and testing data. It provides the documentation, it provides examples, it provides tests. Um, and during this like 25 minute lecture, we are going to create a new R package called your package name. And the nice thing is, is that it's all about structure. So there's like a 60, 70 page document on how you have to write R packages. And by just watching this video, I hope that you don't have to read those 60 pages and that I kind of summarize them all for you so that you can do it very quickly. So to create a new R package, you first need to install two things. You need to install, install the R compiler called R tools, um, which you can download from here. The link will also be down in the description. Um, make sure that it matches your version of R that you have installed. So if you have R 3.0 installed, then you need R tools 3.1. If you have R 3.2 or later installed, you need 3.3. Um, and every version of R has its own compiler. Besides that, you also need MCTEX, and MCTEX is needed so you can create the PDFs. So the PDFs are the things that have the documentation and the examples and these kinds of things in there. Um, so you can get that from MCTEX.org, just go and download it. So after you've installed these two tools, the thing that you have to do is create a new directory on your desktop and this new directory on your desktop or wherever you want to store it, of course, will hold your entire package. So uh, the structure of the folders and files need to match the official guidelines. So if you would click this link and go to the guidelines, you can see that it's like a 60, 70 page document that you have to read. Um, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to create it. So to do or to create an R package, you have to run R from the command line. So to start the command line in Windows, you rush on cm, cmd.exe. So you, you press your Windows key, you type cmd, you press enter, and it will open up the terminal for you. Um, that will look like this if you're on Windows 7 or Windows 10. Um, if you're on Linux, then you have to open a terminal slightly differently. But if you're using Linux, you already know how to use it, right? So that, that should not be... a an issue. Um, but of course, like it's always complex because a lot of people don't use the command line or don't use bash, um, but it's a good thing. So first things first, right? We created a package or we created an empty folder and this empty folder um, is called your package name. So that's just the name of my, uh, of my package, right? So I'm going to create a package called your package name. You will probably want to use a different name. So the first thing that if in Windows we go and we open the command line, we have to go to the desktop. So that means uh, change directory cd desktop um, slash, right? That just moves you from where you are to the desktop folder. And then you execute this command r cmd capitalized check small letters and then the name of the package. Um, and then what will happen is r will tell you that this is not an official package. Right, because it says, okay, I'm so good to check it and then blah, 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 and then checking for file and it sees that this file is missing. So there's no description file. So in the official guidelines, it says you have to have a description file. Um, so let's create one. So hey, we're going to create a new file called description, all capitals. Um, there, It's not allowed to have .txt at the end. So make sure that when you're on Windows that you show extensions in Windows and that the file that you create does not have a .txt extension. So and inside of the file we're going to add the following. So we're saying package, double point, the name of the package, the version, the date, the title, the author, the maintainer, the depends. Um, in our case we're only going to have R code in there so hey, you need R version 3 or later. Um, a description which is a description of your package and then a license which you can choose from a list of licenses. Um, be aware that this license has to be an open source license if you want to publish your code on CRAN. So next step, we now added the description file. So we check the package again. So we execute the same command as before, rcmd check your package name and a note inside, right? So packages without R code can be installed without a namespace file, but it is cleaner to add an empty one. 
all right so let's fix that right because it did make a package so we already have an R package it's just that it doesn't have any R code and um, we got a kind of note which is not really a warning but it's still annoying so let's fix it um, so we, we add this namespace file so the namespace file again has no .txt at the end it's again written all capitalized um, and the function of this file so why is it there it is there to load external dynamic libraries um, and to export functions to the user, right? So, for example, I need to use the SQL database and I need to connect to SQL.dll or something like that. Um, but we also need, so every function that I'm writing, so every R function that I write, I need to specify here that I want to give this function to the user. Right, so we do the same, so we create this empty file. Um, inside of the file, we're just going to say, well, this we don't we don't use any dynamic link libraries no dlls no nothing no c++ code or whatever i'm just going to export a function which is called my first package function so my first package function i now promise that this package that i'm making is is providing an r function called my first package function um, so i have to make it right so i have to now create an r folder inside of the your package name right so i create an r folder and this will hold all the r code files um, and all code in these files should be functions because you are not allowed to give the user anything else you can only give the user functions that he can call and work with um, and i normally have the strategy that i have one file one function right so after this, my code looks like this. So I have my namespace file, I have my description file, and I have my R folder. Um, and of course, I have to make a, a code file, right? So I have to provide this function. Um, so again, ha the way that I do it is I open up a new file and I say my first package function in comments. And then I say when I wrote it, um, when it was first written, mo first modified, always add a header to your files. And then I'm just going to make a function which does nothing. Right, so I'm going to say my first package function, um, assign to this a function with no parameters, and inside of the function there's nothing. This thing just does not nothing. So, but that's the minimal function that I can write. And of course I have to save this file then as my package function .r into the R folder. And I always make sure that the file name is the same as the function name, so just that I can find it back easily. So again, recheck your package. So we execute the command again, rcmd check your package name and a warning. So the warning says undocumented code objects. All user level objects in a package should have documentation entries. So R forces you to write documentation, which is really, really good because a lot of programming languages do not force you to write documentation, meaning that these programming languages don't have proper documentation um, but R forces you to write documentation so let's add some documentation so um, documentation goes into a folder called man for some strange reason this doesn't need to be capitalized this needs to be like lowercase um, this fi this file uh, this folder will hold all of the manual files that you create again same structure one file one documentation of a function so inside the man folder, I create my first package function .rd, so r documentation file. So now my folder looks like this, namespace, description, r file with the my first package function .r in there. And then I have a manual folder called man um, where there's the documentation. I just copy paste this in. This is just the skeletal. So this is just an empty documentation object. It's written in a LaTeX kind of language. So if you're interested in, in that, um, then hey, learn LaTeX. Um, but what it does, it just gives a name, an alias, a title, a description, then how to use it, arguments, details, values, and examples. There has to be an example. And um, don't forget that at the end, you have to say slash keywords methods, because this is a, the description of a function. Again, recheck your package and done. We've created an R package. We have made code. This package can be submitted to CRAN. So we go to the website, we search submit your package to CRAN um, and you're, you're done and it works. So if you want to give a single function, 
this is all that you have to do. So step one, learn how to build an R package. Step two, don't know exactly, but step three is going to be profit. Um, of course, because we have now made this package, right? We want to make sure that it installs correctly. So we also run the command to install our newly made package into R. So we say RCMD install your package name, and then it will show you that it's installing it to the users folder and uh, blah and blah and blah, and then it's done. Right. So again, yeah, since it's a very simple package, um, no errors are here. Of course, make sure that you check it. Right. So startup R after installing your package, use the library function to load your package, um, execute your function, and also do question mark my first package function to look at the help file that had been created. Right. So the help file here is more or less empty, um, but it does have a little example. So that's your first R package. It's that simple. And why are there 60, 70 pages of documentation on how to write R packages? That is because you can add a lot more to your package. For example, you can add data, right? Imagine that I'm writing a new function which does um, Mendelian randomization analysis, right? Then, of course, to test this algorithm to test this function that I have, um, I need to have some data to test it on. Um, but in our case, we don't have any data. Our function doesn't do anything. Um, but if you wanted to add data, you have to create a folder called data. Again, it's all lowercase. Um, so for example, I open up R and I just make a random data matrix. So I just say make a matrix with a thousand random numbers in there, a hundred rows, 10 columns. Um, and I just say save random matrix. So I assign it to a variable and then I save this variable to a file in the data folder called random matrix dot R data, right? So R data is the extension for data in R. Remember, data also needs to be documented. So besides making this data file, in the manual folder, I also have to add a random matrix dot RD file, so a, a data description file. So how does the data description look like? Well, it looks very similar, right? Name, alias, in this type, I have to give it a doc type. So say doc type is data. Um, and now the keyword at the end is called data sets. Um, but for the rest, it has the exact same structures um, than are the exact same entries. And of course, these are just the entries that go into the help file. Of course, we want to provide testing as well, right? Because we have now our package, we have our data, we have our function, but of course, we need to make sure that the, the function does what we expect it to do. So and besides the examples in the manual files, we can have more tests because the examples are actually ran when you compile your package. So when you compile your package, it looks at all of the examples and it executes all of the examples. Um, so that's already the first layer of kind of protection that you have from R, right? But we can also explicitly add more testing and to do that, we create a folder which is called tests and all of the R files that you put here will be executed automatically during the building of the package. So when you do R CMD check, but also when you do, uh, no, not when you do R CMD install. So when you do R CMD check, it will run all of the different files in here. So I generally follow this system where I say test underscore 001.r, then I have another file called test underscore 002.r and these are just tests, right? So they just, um, give some input to the function that I provide to the user and then test if the output is what I expect it to be. So a very basic test, which is a very poor test in this case, but this is a test that just randomly fails, right? So again, every file that I create has a header, um, but here I'm just saying if draw a random number, if the random number is larger than 0 0.8, then you just have to stop, right? So 20% of the time, um, compiling the package will now give me an error, right? It's not a good test because it fails randomly, um, but hey, this is how you build tests. So you build a test by just saying, if executing my function leads to a value which is not equal to what I expect, stop and tell that the test was not successful. So some common mistakes when you make an R package, when you install a package into R, make sure that R is not running. Right? Since you're installing it via the command line, you could have your R window open. And especially if you're working with multiple monitors, um, then 
it might be that R is running because if R is running, it cannot update the package code. Um, always make sure that you check your package before installing. So always run rcmd check first and then run rcmd install. And make sure that you add enough testing, right? Use the documentation for quick and very simple tests and then use the test directory if you have more thorough tests, right? If you want to run and do something like a thousand times, then that should not go into the documentation. It should just go into the test folder. In the documentation, you just say, oh, well, when I do this, then the output is 15. Um, but hey, in the test folder, you just test like 10 or 50 or 100 different possibilities. And so different input, expected output. All right, that was it. So thank you guys for being at the lecture.